America. And to the Republic. And to the Republic. For which it stands. For which it stands. One nation. One nation. nation. Under God. Under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. Justice for all. For the injustice for all. For all. And if I could ask just for a moment of silence for all our service people and the people in Texas who are going through a, uh, the remnants of a terrible storm they've had and weather they've had. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to look at, according to the way people are set up on my screen here, I'm going to ask for a roll call. Our town manager, Mr. Bill Zolper. Mr. Zolper, you're here. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Zolper from, the, from DENREC. Lieutenant Zolper here. OK. Commissioner Jasinski. Present. Commissioner Persinger. Here. Mr. Townsend, our attorney. Here. Mr. Stevens, commissioner. Here. Todd Fritzman, in charge of the Beach Patrol. Present. And Commissioner Bauer. Here, present. And last but not least, myself. I'm listed as Jim Deedy's on the screen, but it's Dale Cook. Mr. Deedes, we know it's you. Mr. Deedes is going to try to get in from home. I'm using his computer computer here at Town Hall. <laughs> um, is there a motion to accept the agenda? Motion. Motion by Mr. Bauer. Second. Second by Commissioner Stevens. Stevens, I'm sorry. Trying to see who's talking there at the moment. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I ask all in favor say aye. Aye. All the commissioners, that is. Any against? Any abstention? Therefore, unanimous. Um, I, I've asked, so that the commissioners all know, I've asked uh, uh, Lieutenant Zolper and uh, Mr. Fritzman. I'm sorry, Mr. Townsend, did you have your hand up? Uh, is there a public comment uh, on the agenda? Yes, there is. Thank you very much for you. Ashley, is there anybody in line for public comment? Yes, it appears we have three. The first one is Vince Stefanzo. I'm sorry, Vince? Vince Stefanzo. Okay. Good morning, sir. Okay, Vince, I got, I got five things going on here, so let me. Mr. Defonso, are you there? Your mic's not on. I am here. Hi, how are you? There you go, sir. You are on for public comment. You have three minutes, sir. Mm. All right. You're ready for my dissertation. Great seeing you guys. Mm. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good morning. Good to see your smiling faces. Town managers, Oprah, and commissioners. First, again, thank you for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome Bill as a new town manager. I think... Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with him a few weeks ago, and I really think he's gonna be a great asset to the town. You guys know me, most of you do. Um, my company, TKO Hospitality, we manage the Hyatt, the Lighthouse Club Event Center, and the new restaurant that we built this summer. Um, I'm also uh, a homeowner here, um, and also here today representing Dewey Beach Enterprises, uh, which I'm involved in as well. Um, I also serve on the board of directors for the, uh, the Dewey Rehoboth Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Dewey Business Partnership. So obviously, you know, I have a very vested interest in this community. Uh, the new Bay Beach, Bay Walk, you know, are great amenities for the town. Um, last summer, even with COVID, you know, there were many families using the Bay Beach, you know, during the day. Uh, during the evening, many people came to listen to the bands, you know, that we had on the deck, watch the sunset sat around the bonfires. I mean, some of you commissioners were, you know, even there. I mean, it was just wonderful, great vibe, almost like a movie scene. Um, you know, we also hosted wedding ceremonies at the Bay Beach, and, and we've done wedding ceremonies on that beach for years. Um, these ceremonies typically happen around four o'clock, and they last less than an hour for about 40 to, 50, 40 to 75 people. Uh, I do realize last summer on a few occasions, the hotel, you know, we set up too early in the day, 
Um, but later in the season, I think we got our process down pretty good and we started setting up, you know, closer to three o'clock in the afternoon when the beach started to clear out. And, and as you guys know, as well, everyone loves watching a wedding ceremony. One of the things that I do recommend that we designate a certain area for that on the beach for ceremonies, uh, maybe closer towards the new lighthouse where it's being built. You know, the purpose of redeveloping the gazebo, Baywalk and Bay Beach, which Dewey Beach Enterprise is paid for, was really to provide an amenity to the property owners and visitors of Dewey. You know, its intent was to be a place where things happen in town. You know, I participated in the town's marketing committee a, a month or so ago, and they had many great ideas on how they felt they could use this area. And again, the marketing committee, Drew and Kelly and all them, Pat, you know, they did a great job this past holiday season decorating the Baywalk, which actually became a wonderful attraction. Uh, and also, you know, as part of the Dewey Beach Business Partnership, you know, we're planning to host many of our events, you know, on this Bay Beach, Baywalk, our deck and the gazebo area this coming season. Um, I know, I know Bill Lauer from our group, you know, sent you guys, town manager and commissioners, earlier in the week, um, an email which included the covenant, you know, executed between Dewey Beach Enterprises and the state of Delaware. You know, as most of you guys know, the state owns the property on which the Baywalk and the expanded area of the Bay Beach is built. You know, and in this covenant, Dewey Beach Enterprises is responsible for the maintenance and management of these Bayside amenities. You know, as a convenience to the town, its residents, visitors, you know, Dewey Beach Enterprises, you know, we, we lease this property from the state at a cost of over $27,000 per year. Consistent with the obligations of this covenant, it's critical that Dewey Beach Enterprises, you know, through the Hyatt exercise control of these amenities with appropriate oversight from the town of Dewey Beach. Uh, I think that's very important. If we're gonna be the ones that are gonna be picking up the trash, maintaining it, that we have say so on the type of events and can control that working with the town. Um, Mr. So Cavanzo, yep. Mr. Cavanzo, I'm gonna interrupt you for a minute. You've been three minutes, but I'm gonna give you another half a minute if you will. Go I don't ahead. need any more. I think I made my point. I appreciate that, Dale. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks, much. We, we appreciate your help, believe me, in this. Ashley, is there anybody else that's on public comment? Yes, the next person, it just says iPad 9 Mary Jo, so I do not have a name, but we'll turn them now. While they're trying to keep the business person in, um, the next person is Elaine. I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Ashley. The next person I'll bring in while this person is trying to connect, and the next one we have is Elaine Bolt. Thank you. Are you there? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Oh, hi. I guess I'm the only one. I'm Mary Jo. And, Mary Jo, um, how are you? If you give your, give your name and your location. Oh, absolutely. Mary Jo Pareca, P-O-R-R-E-C-A, Lewis, Delaware. And are, big... you a prop, are you a property owner in Dewey? No, I'm not. I just But you're more than welcome this. anyway. Oh, thank you so much. I love your beaches. I'm a big fan and was just kind of interested. And you want to make a comment about what we're, what we're on? Oh, no, thank you. I was just curious um, about, you know, what you were going to discuss, because I really like to paddleboard on the beach. And I just wondered if there might be something I should learn about new rules or regulations. That's a very good comment. We thank you. Ashley, you have somebody else? Elaine Bull, if she is there. Elaine Bull. Oops. Elaine, are you there? She's probably connecting. She's connecting. All right. So, um, 
bring in Maureen Emmett. Maybe wait, maybe I'm wait. sorry, say that again, Ashley. Maureen Emmett. All right, Marlene, is it? Maureen. Hi, Maureen Emmett. This is Dale Cook. You're on board here. Hi, thank you. Uh, you have three minutes to make a comment, ma'am. Thank you oh, very much for coming in. Thank you for letting me join you. I wrote um, to the commissioner and voiced my opinion of the beach. I'm understanding that they want to restrict use of the public beach. Is that correct? Or Restrict use to the public beach? Mm. Yes, to the public. No, ma'am. We're, we're setting up the, the beach bay and boardwalk rules just like we do on the ocean side. So Perfect. If, if you have three minutes for a, a comment. Mm. Perfect. That's all I said. And I think that restrictions are already in place and I don't understand why we wouldn't just continue with those restrictions. And it's a perfect beach for families. And the town of Dewey has done a lot to try to get our um, reputation changed to be a family destination and not the party destination. Yeah. So I agree with continuing the restrictions that we have in place. That's all. Thank you very much. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. That was short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teacher, right to the point. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Thank you, Maureen. Ashley, do you have anybody else? The only one we have still is Elaine Bull. If she and it, sh it shows that she's on the call. Yeah, it shows that she's on, but I can't hear her. So. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, Elaine, go right ahead. You have three minutes comment. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't listen to the first comment, so I'm just going to listen and I'll send in stuff later because I was on another conference call. So I'll just listen to it. Now, would be a good, so you don't have any comments at, at this time? No, I don't know because I don't want to repeat with the, whatever the lady said before, so I'll just listen. I saw the, I read the paperwork, so I'm just Thank listening. you. <laughs> so, Ashley, she's, Ms. Bowl was finished. Mm -hmm. And we'll go on to our meeting now. Is that all right with you? Um, well, folks, I'm going to ask uh, Lieutenant Zolper to speak first and give no more than five minutes and, and give us some ideas that he has that might help us in forming rules and regulations for our bay beaches. All right, Lieutenant Casey Zolper, uh, some of you may know me. Uh, sure, you guys all know my brother, my oldest brother, uh, uh, Bill Zolper. Um, so quick history, our family has been around Dewey since the early 1900s, you know, uh, so you've probably seen us around. I've been with uh, Delaware Natural Resource Police Division of Fish and Wildlife uh, Enforcement for, for roughly uh, 21 years now, coming up this spring. I spent most of my patrol time uh, was uh, when I was in patrol before I promoted up to the uh, supervisor of Sussex County, uh, working the Rehoboth Bay and specifically around the Dewey area. Um, so some of the things that we run into that uh, uh, some misconceptions with the town versus the state is uh, some of the town ordinances versus uh, the, our state regulations on what we can do for boating safety. Um, in Dewey, uh, there's some laws that are a little bit different than the rest of the state, how they pertain to boats and jet skis. Uh, Dewey actually has incorporated on the ocean side out 300 feet, but they don't have the bay side incorporated. However, the waters on the ocean and bay side in Dewey Beach, um, personal watercraft jet skis have to be 300 feet slow no wake from anybody in the water. Uh, and all swimmers, all docks and uh, piers and any boats that are anchored have to be 300 feet. Slow no wake. Uh, probably early 2000s, Pat Wright uh, put something together where we, where the town of Dewey funded some slow no wake buoys uh, that we put off of the town um, to, to mark that area for the, for the pers personal watercraft. However, boats are only required 100 feet, not 300 feet like a jet ski, just because of maneuverability. Um, we have, uh, at the end of last season, because uh, we've, we've developed a lot of problems again with the wake violations and the safety down off of Dewey, we've gone ahead and gotten four buoys put together 
that we're going to be uh, deploying back off of Dewey again this year for Slint Wake. So it, it'll essentially be a marker so people can see that marker of where they can take off and, and resume safe speed again. Uh, inside those buoys within that 300 feet on a jet ski and 100 feet on a boat, uh, they can only be going headway speed. Headway speed is just fast enough to maintain steerage. Um, I know Dewey has some uh, town ordinances, I think, on the ocean side about boats coming inside uh, on the ocean side or the bay side. Um, the only thing that we can enforce would be the slow no wake violations. So if we have a boat that comes in all the way to the beach and even dumps people on and off. That's a town ordinance violation. Nothing we can enforce on our side. Uh, we would be happy to assist if, you know, Dewey Beach Police Department was going to take action. Uh, we could make contact and assist with that, but I just want to make sure everybody's clear that uh, we don't have anything except for Slino Wake or negligent operation of a vessel. Uh, last summer, I was going to meet with uh, some of the lifeguards, but uh, uh, right about the time we were going to meet, Todd had it all lined up. Uh, is when kind of Corona struck the town, uh, which we'll be looking forward to meeting again this summer. And that's just going to be a meeting to talk about what kind of violations uh, we would like to get a phone call on, uh, giving them our dispatch number and different things to look for for intoxicated boaters and things like that. Um, as far as I heard somebody from the public comment talking about uh, um, paddle boards and they like the paddle board. Uh, just make sure, and, and this is something we see off of Dewey a lot, all paddle boarders are uh, considered vessels when they're at, at sea. When they start paddling out the bay, they are required to have a life jacket on board and a sound producing device. They don't have to wear the life jacket, but figured I'd answer your public comment on any of the paddle board situations. What was um, that, a life jacket and a what device? And a, and a sound device. Sound. Like a whistle, whistle or a horn. So basically they have to at least have a whistle tied off to their life jacket and that's strapped to the, uh, either strapped to the board or, or they have to be wearing it. So um, I know that there was maybe some questions about uh, safety in a swimming area, maybe trying to put something up possibly uh, uh, for a swimming area. We've, we've kind of recommended that uh, down at Massey's uh, campground. If you guys have been through Massey's ditch, uh, we get a lot of swimmers and we're doing a lot of water rescues on swimmers down there that, get swept out in the current. I think it's a good idea. I don't have the authorization to say, yes, you can legally do it. Um, however, I think it's a great idea if you put something up to, to keep the jet skis and the boats out of entering an area with also keeping in mind, keeping areas open for the paddle boards and the kayaks to be able to still launch and retrieve from. Is that it, Mr. Zolber? That's it, unless you guys have any questions for me on, on what we can do and, you know, we're. We usually in the summertime, we're going to have a vessel underway on the inland bays or within 10 minutes of underway. Um, uh, it's nine o'clock in the morning till uh, till about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, so we'll have somebody able to respond. But uh, on, a, on a typical weekend rotation, even uh, with, with a fully staffed weekend, we've got four to five guys covering the whole county, including Aswam in the Delaware Bay and, and over to the Nanticoke River. Um, last year, we ended up running uh, 50 water rescues uh, down here in Sussex County. So we're busy, but we're, we're still available. And if uh, you guys call the 800 number, we'll have an officer respond out there. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give you a chance to give you a chance to stay with us, but I want to give the commissioners a chance to ask you questions. So if you, are there any commissioners that would like to ask questions of Lieutenant Zolper? It might affect uh, Mr. Bauer. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, quick question here. As far as, as far as drop, you know, where boats come in, drop people off and come to shore, is, is that state regulated, Denmark reg regulated? I, I'm not. That's a, that's I'm a town not, ordinance. Clear. That's a town ordinance, sir. Town, town ordinance. Okay. Now, uh, there, there is a state regulation by state parks. So quick history. Denrick is a agency with 800 people. There's an enforcement section, which is the Natural Resource Police. Parks is totally separate from us. Environmental, control, environmental crime. So state parks on the state parks beaches only has a regulation prohibiting that just like you guys do. We don't have the authority to enforce the parks regulation, but just same as with you guys. So if you end up having an issue with somebody coming on or off the beach, that's a town ordinance violation. We'll assist, but we can't actually enforce it. So, so like in a like marina, marina, for example, marina, obviously, obviously you, that's where you that's dock your boat. boat. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that against town ordinance to dock a boat then? Or? You'd have to answer that. That's a town, that's a town ordinance. It's uh, for the, I think it's only on the beach side. If, if I remember when I worked down there, it's only on the ocean side. 
That's right. a complication, Mr. Bauer. That's a complication we need to address. Yeah, we need. We do need to address that. I mean, it, obviously, we have marinas more than one, so uh, we have to figure out if, if they're legal or illegal. I guess. Well, they're not illegal, but but we might have to address it when it comes to enforcing regulations of boats docking near right. swimmers. Yep. So our our jurisdiction starts at what point? Three hundred feet from the uh, oh. high tide line. Is that the on the on the right? base That's line? Out. When I looked into it on the bay side uh, years ago, um, it, it's basically the shoreline is the town of Dewey. Uh, on the ocean side, you guys, I believe, are still incorporated out 300 feet on the ocean side. Yeah, Correct. so specifically yeah. the Hyatt property then, because that beach was built past the tide line, right? I think the demarcation of that from what Bill Lauer sent us was, you know, there, there was a previous uh, uh, shoreline there, and this is new stuff that's added. So I guess my question is, is whose jurisdiction is that? Is that the towns or is that state? And may, that might be a question for Fred. Yeah, probably the town attorney can figure that out where the where the actual town line is and the boundary lines. Thank you very much. Any other questions for Lieutenant Zolper? No, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Yeah. If there's not, Lieutenant Zoper, you're welcome to stay and make any comments you want as we move along, or you're welcome to go ahead and uh, sign off sign one of the two. We're, we're, we'd like to like have you stay, but that's up to you, you depending you on your time limits. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, Mr. Fritchman, uh, I'd like to make some comments, and, and, and I'm sure you have problems that you need to address for the Bay Beach. Go right ahead, sir. Yes, good morning, everyone. Todd Fritchman, Dewey Beach Patrol Captain. Uh, quick disclosure, everything that I'm going to be presenting now um, is in uh, perspective in, in regards to public safety, liability, emergency medical response, and civil law standards. Um, so piggybacking off of Lieutenant Zolper, the Bayside doesn't have any regulations pertaining to distancing uh, from the shoreline and the commingling of boats and swimmers at this point. There are no regulations. All the regulations apply to the ocean side. Right. But it would be the Beach Patrol's recommendation that we do adopt standards for the bay side, very similar to the beach side, if not the same, because they're relative to the regulations that DENREC has for the operation of the vessels and the speed and wake production. So in other words, if we are going to co-mingle boats and swimmers on the Bay Beach, Van Dyke Bay Beach, we've got to delineate a swimming zone with marked buoys that are mourned. And my recommend, or excuse me, the Beach Patrol's recommendation would be 100 feet from the existing high water mark out into the bay. That would also, de uh, that's the same demarcation for um, the boats, if I'm not mistaken, uh, coming to the shoreline 100 feet. And then the, you know, the, the uh, jet skis have to slow their wake and everything down 300 feet. So we still have that area uh, demarcated. So my point being is that we cannot, because of the usage increase with the high being done and now the public knowing about this, the usage is going to go through the roof. So we can't co-mingle boats and we can't uh, co-mingle boats and motors with swimmers, especially when we're dealing with infants and sometimes even babies that are in the bay. And uh, so my recommendation is as in conjunction with the state, to put up the no swimming or the uh, swimming zone areas, no boats or whatever these buoys, very easily done, very simple. That's uh, the one recommendation. The other one is we currently have beach ordinances that are labeled beaches, and those ordinances, is in the beach patrol's opinion, should be adopted and utilized and enforced on the bay beach as well. These are non-restrictive ordinances. Our ordinances do not restrict any current activities other than regulating the commingling of boats and swimmers at this point. 
Uh, we do, however, in adopting those beach ordinances and apply them to the Van Dyke Beach, we would not recommend the commingling of unleashed or leashed dogs on the beach facility during the usage times of between 10 and 5. I know it's 9.30 on the other beach, but it could be 10 and 5 here or the same while the, the usage is occurring. We can't co-mingle dogs and people together in one when there's heavy uh, active and passive usage going on. However, last year and the year before, we did have a designated area for the dogs that just happened to be snow-fenced area uh, adjoining the uh, Van Dyke Street and the south end of the, the gazebo. That area was fenced in for whatever reason. And so we did ask people to restrict during the usage operation between 10 and 5. Instead of commingling the dogs, we asked people to keep their dog in that particular area for curbing their dog. Now, that was well-received and also received with um, disappointment from some. But for safety reasons and common sense and what our rate and frequency and incidents of traumatic injury, urination, defecation on people, dog fights, all the different things that we've been dealing with with dogs, we cannot recommend co-mingling of dogs with people while it's being used uh, for active and passive recreation before 10, after 5, or in a designated area. We also have a concern. The hazard and hindrances of the area are the stormwater effluent pipes uh, from the street inlets. We do need to demarcate those areas with a more of a permanent signage, potentially even lining the outside of those pipes with a bar guard, which is a standard uh system so that a child or something couldn't swim into that pipe and get stuck, a bar guard and possibly um, some type of a uh, material that would prevent, if, if a kid were to hit their head on that end of that pipe, they're not going to, it would be like a foamy material or some kind of aquatic approved material to go around the edge of that pipe to prevent injury. So we've got to demarcate those pipes. The other thing is we recommend the Hyatt does an effluent discharge. I don't know what it is, whether it's condensation, whatever it may be. The Hyatt does an effluent discharge into the storm drain right on the end of Van Dyke Street. And I, we don't know what that discharge is, so we need to know what that is. Because what's coming into the pipe and draining into the bay is also where the swimmers are. So we don't want hazardous material or gray water with solvents or anything in it mixing with people for obvious reasons. Um, let's see. We do not, uh, we, we do recommend that the ordinance relative to beaches regarding the use of marine hard craft, i.e. paddle boards, and kayaks be lifted and not applied to the Bay Beach as it is on the, um, on the uh, ocean going beaches because we don't want to restrict or inhibit the vendors and the Bay activities which are less energy impact waves and so forth. So we don't see any hazard with that as long as we, we will enforce, as we do on the ocean side, we will enforce the uh, federal regulations and state regulations regarding um, flotation device and sound making device on paddle boards and kayaks. But we will ensure and also monitor the vendors to make sure they're licensed, permitted, and do the same. So that would be part of the... Uh... So in conclusion, we would designate a swimming zone, no boats allowed in there during our operated, uh, operation hours, maintain wakes, all the ordinances would apply there just like they would all other beaches because they're all very uh, applicable and non-restrictive um, and designate a dog area there uh, and get the stormwater pipes protected and, and demarcated, determining what sources of water are being discharged and um, we see no problem with any uh, interference to any businesses or 
any of the current operations. Uh, we just are interested in making sure public safety, liability, emergency medical response, and civil law is all considered in the decision making. Thank you, Mr. Frischman. Is that it? Yes, sir. Uh, are there any co any questions from the commissioner for Mr. Frischman? I just had a quick question. Uh, Mr. Parsinger and then Mr. Stevens. Uh, the, the designated area that you described for, for dogs, um, how big is that area? That area was probably 30 feet by 40 feet. Okay. It was a small section. It was a small section of the beach okay. that was designated in silt fence. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And um, yeah, and of course that was just at random. Like I, I, that was part of the site work or whatever was going on. But since the fence was there, we took the opportunity and just made that the designated area. Mr. Okay. Stevens, you had a question, and then Mr. Bauer. Yeah, um, a few questions. Uh, Mr. Richmond, thank you for coming on. I, 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 I like the conversation and your, and your viewpoints in terms of our role in public safety. Um, the, the question I have for you is, you know, obviously there's going to be some nuances being it is the bay and is the boats. And while we put the buoys out there to protect the swimmers, I assume you would, we would still allow people to get off boats and walk into the bay, walk into the Hyatt or walk out to boats. Is that, is that your recommendation? Because I know, I, I believe we can do that on the beach. Absolutely, we would still allow that on the bay side and you're correct, that, that cannot happen on the beach side. Okay. Um, the, the second comment, and, and again, I know our goal I, uh, is to have some, go ahead, Todd. Hey, yeah, I, uh, let me finish, I, I lost you guys yeah. for a second. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. I didn't uh, get a chance to finish commissioner. I'm sorry to interrupt, but one thing that we will be enforcing, however, is the people coming in and out off the boats will not be able to bring glass with them. They will not be able to transport alcohol back and forth. Um, they will not be able to come on to shore if they are extremely intoxicated or show any evidence of emer uh, medical attention because we can't allow that to happen. Um, as our, you know, we are emergency medical responders, so we can't let a stumbling drunk come floating across the bay on the land without dealing with that as emerges if it's that bad. You, you understand what I mean, Commissioner? Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I, I, don't, I also would want them on a boat. <laughs> well, that's, that's the reality that's we of the bay Lieutenant. beach. Yeah. Well, we see we are going to deal with the civil law through the program that we already have. And if it becomes more than a civil matter, non-compliant or someone that's not following rules, uh, then we have a process in which we uh, call in PD right away for that. OK, Mr. Stevens, you had another question. You yeah, were just ask? one quick question, Todd, uh, uh, Mr. Frenchman. What is your position on um, Right now on the beach, we do not allow alcohol. Uh, what is your position on from a base perspective? We can we can adapt, and so yeah, that's a great point. So what we do is we don't have a right to go in and check coolers and anything unless there is a situation that gives probable cause. However, the open container, like a case of beer or a glass fifth of Lord Calvert or whatever it might be out in the open, we would respond to that under our current ordinances and they would have to remove that from the facility or face the fine for possession of alcohol in public. So, but we don't have the right to go sniff cups and so on and so forth. So that leaves it up to the discretion of you know, it's, it's kind of like a gray area. But if it is a public beach, and public beaches, the whole town has a law, an ordinance that prohibits public consumption of alcohol on town property during the periods of May 15th to September 15th. So we do, the answer to your question is yes, we do have to enforce that. 
but the only time we would enforce it if there's probable cause. Mr. Stevens, is that all? I, I guess the question that I'm, I'm trying to get my head around is the varying of opinions we've had. You know, the we've had the we've had dogs on the beach. We've had I'm, ta I'm specifically talking about the bay. You know, we've had dogs on the beach. Right. There have been alcohol that's been consumed on the beach. You know, whether they're buying into the hide and sitting down. And it seems to me that the question is whether or not the beach is public or the beach is private. Because if the beach is, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Fred, but if it's a public beach, then it, it is, as, as Todd is saying, that we should be adhering to the rules of Dewey. If it's a private beach, then it's the Hyatt. And I guess that's where I'm, I'm, cons I'm, I'm confused is and I'll ask for guidance. Is that a question from Mr. Townsend? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mr. Townsend, go ahead, please. Yeah, so um, we'd have to look at some of the at that memorandum of understanding, for instance, to to determine whether the state has uh, assigned its its right to to manage that area to us. Um, but it it it's a question that requires some attention. It's a good question, but I think there there are other areas that the other areas of law or through these agreements that might have a bearing on the answer. Is that all, Mr. Stevens? For now. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bauer, you were next. Yeah. Uh, just real quick. It, well, first off, uh, thanks, uh, Todd. I mean, that's, that's some valuable insight you're giving us here on it. Uh, the staffing for back there, I know we've uh, tossed this around before. So, you know, my, my opinion is whatever rules we create, we need to enforce them. And in order to enforce them, we're going to need people to do that, correct? Uh, is the staffing plan for this year to have it be a seven day a week, 12 hours a day, or what's, what's your, we what's your recommendation built, for staffing? Yes, commissioner. We have built into the budget, uh, a staffing unit for that on a daily basis. Um, however, we found last year that the service was really only needed, uh, at certain periods of time, Thursday through Sunday during the peak of the year and then eventually Friday through Sunday and then eventually we didn't need uh, any anyone staffing that unit. Right. However, the Hyatt wasn't completed at that time. So the usage and the promotion and the marketing and everything was in, in infancy stage. Right. We do anticipate a much larger crowd there this year due to marketing, finishing of a new restaurant and the Hyatt being done and all sold out and all these different family units and people in there. We expect the usage to go through the roof. Um, so that is something that we'll be feeling our way through and monitoring on a daily basis. I do that personally and, you know, and um, we'll have it planned for, but if we don't need to use that staffing unit and, funding like on a torrential downpour day like we do on the we have to be on the beach side no matter what the bay side is where it's touch and go there but to answer your question we are funded for it with a staffing unit okay to Bauer, is that all no that yeah, that's it that's all i wanted to figure out here mr jesinski your hand was up yeah, this is uh, actually for uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Fritchman, Lieutenant Casey, and Fred. So uh, you brought up the issue of the town of Dewey Beach does not own the water beyond the shoreline. And we're trying to have rules and we're trying to kind of coordinate boats and we're going to have people and stuff egressing in and out of the water, you know, that are associated with those rules. So do we have a situation where we've got to fairly quickly uh, kind of try to extend the town's uh, rights out a portion into the water, or is that not an issue? Mr. Townsend, did you want to address, try to address that? Well, I, I don't, I, I was anticipating the question. I, I don't know that we're, we're going to be able to extend our jurisdiction into the waters. We do have a definition of beach that is, um, that does apply to the bayside as well as the area between the dunes and the ocean. And as uh, L Lieutenant Zoper indicated, um, we have jurisdiction beyond the, the um, our end of the ocean. 
Um, but with regard to the bay, we have jurisdiction, at least by our code, um, over the land abutting the bay to the to the paved roadway or edge of any abutting private property. So the area beyond the bay before you reach private property is at least pursuant to our code, an area we have jurisdiction over. Beyond, beyond that into the water is uh, a, a different issue. Well, and, that's, and that's really what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if the town doesn't have jurisdiction into the water and you have people kind of basically standing waist high in the water doing something the lifeguards think they shouldn't be doing, mm. don't we kind of have a situation there? That's really what I'm trying to get at. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that's uh, I'm going to meet with the lifeguards at the beginning of the summer and tell them what they uh, should and should not give us a call on. Uh, different violations, whether it, whether it comes to the boating safety aspect of it or just public safety aspects of it, uh, we'll be able to respond out and handle them. And uh, I'm not sure, uh, just for the uh, for the town attorney, um, just to kind of reference some of the local regulations uh, for you when you're when you're doing some research under Delaware Title 23 21 21 talks about how the local towns can promulgate uh, different uh, issues when it comes to boating and, and safety. So might be you one. say 29, 21, 21, 21, 21, under, 21. Uh, mm -hmm. title 23. Gotcha. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Jasinski, is there any other question you have? That was my main question that hasn't been asked by others. Just a comment from myself. Uh, I'll get to you, Mr. Stevens, shortly. Uh, just a comment from myself. I do seem to remember and uh, being old as I am, I'm vague in memory sometimes, that the town attempted to, uh, to annex at one time, part extend our boundary line out into the bay, but was turned down by the state. Mm -hmm. uh, I may be wrong, but I, I believe that happened in the past, so. I remember that. Who does? I remember that, Dale. Okay, Paul, thank you. Yeah, so it's something that we have to address when we start talking about bay and beach rules, you know, uh, we we have to address that subject. And and Fred uh, Townsend, if you go ahead, sir, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I just wanted to see if Lieutenant Richmond ag agreed that we've got a very broad definition of boats in our um, code currently, and it re refers to um, a rigid. Uh, device more than four feet long intended for traveling on the water. And I think that would probably include these paddle boards, which have become very popular probably since that definition arose. Um, I take it that under our current code, if it applied to the beach area, paddle boarding would, um, would violate the, the uh, restrictions on entering and leaving the, the water that you were referring to earlier. Uh, it would, however, we have accommodated by forming access zones for um, paddle boarders and and so forth during the daytime. So we kind of get a little lax on that. Uh, we do not allow the kayaks to go out during our operation hours, though. They're before or after before ten or after five. I think on the bay side, though, sp specifically, it should be no motorized. No motorized boat. Okay. That's what it should be? In your yes, we, we would. Yes, in my opinion, it should be no motorized boat. Nothing with a motor coming into the swimming zone within 100 feet of the shoreline, the designated shoreline. Uh, if the kayaks and paddle boards come through, that's not a, a necessarily uh, safety impact in any way. But a motorized boat is. Yeah. So our current uh, provision in Chapter 65, Section 7, is that non-motorized boats are prohibited from being launched or landed on any ocean beach area between 10 and 5 during the summer season. So that, that would need that's to be correct. adjusted for the bay. No. Yeah, for the bay, that's right. We don't want to adjust it for the ocean because we got to have that fundamental to operate under if we need to. Mm -hmm. But but for the bay side, you are correct, sir. Um, it would be motorized boats. Mm -hmm. 
of any kind are not permitted within the 100 foot designated swimming zone uh, on the van, you know, however we word it, on Van Dyke Beach. Are there any other questions from the commissioner for, for Mr. Fritchman? Good, Todd, if you, again, if you wanna hold on and stay with us for a while, uh, that's fine with us. We would appreciate it because there may be more questions. If not, I'm sure we can write them down and get them to you and get answers to that. But I would like to ask Mr. Zolper, uh, excuse me. I've got, a, Zolper. I've got to run, Mr. Thank you, Todd. Um, I, would need the, Thanks, yeah, I would need the questions. I've got to run. Thanks, everyone. Have a good Friday or a good weekend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Todd. Uh, Lieutenant Zolper, uh, I would ask, do you think knowing that you're answering off the top of your head and not committing to any committing you to anything but do you think the state would have a problem if we had a uh, a line of buoys out say 50 or 100 feet out from the shoreline to indicate where we would like boats to stop before coming near the shore so i i don't see any opposition we can't i can't authorize that um, and there's some different things, like if it's permanent structure, temporary structure with some aqueous land permits, when you're putting, uh, you know, you put like the, say you even put it out there with some type of anchor and you leave it there. If it stays for so long, you have to get certain permits. So if it's like a temporary thing, I don't think the state would have an issue. Um, you know, we, we, I think it's a great idea personally, but I wouldn't be able to authorize something. Gotcha. Like um, Thank you, sir. You know, it's it's just uh, it's it's kind of that I'm not sure exactly who it would be to authorize that, but it's not going to be us because we're specific for our regulatory process is for vessel safety and boating safety. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Mr. Stevens, you put your hand up just a minute ago. Uh, yeah, I was just I, I had a, a question tying into uh, Mr. Defonso's point when he came online saying that he pays or that the the Dewey Beach Enterprise pays Denrec, I thought he said, $27,000 for cleaning or maintenance or rights. I'm not sure what word he used, actually, but for rights to that beach. And I was wondering if Lieutenant Zolper, to me, I wouldn't be paying money towards the department unless I was the, the rights were being conveyed to me as, as that beach. And I guess I'm still hung up on private versus public. Right. And do you know if through that agreement from De like has Denrec basically given the, is that has Denrec made that a private beach to the Hyatt as I guess what I'm trying to, because I, I think where we're heading is trying to make rules and I want to make sure we have the jurisdiction, if that makes any sense. Lieutenant Zolper. Yeah, that, so I, I believe he said the state of Delaware, not, not Denrec, okay. but it might be Denrec in, in general, but Denrec is a large agency, probably 700 people. We're just in a, we are the, the boating safety entity under DENREC. Uh, so that's not an answer that I would have. He'd have. You'd have to see who he has signed that with and what their attorneys have worked out. I think where you're gonna have a, uh, where you might run into some gray area is the trying to enforce anything uh, on vessels outside that swim area. Because like I said, all we have is a Slono wake law. We don't have anything. It would have to be something that would come out of town ordinance. And do you have that, that authority under the town ordinance to go hundred feet out into the bay? Gotcha. Thank, Thank you, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Uh, Mr. Stevens, just to, uh, you know, if you, I, I reread this morning what was sent to us by, uh, by the uh, business people in that area. And it said, with, in accordance with our MAR, it made a point of saying that with the MAR. And it, the map that they sent to us said, uh, designated all of the beach area as public beach meaning it was not private, so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for that class clarification. Uh, any other questions that, I yeah. guess, I'm sorry, Mr. Bauer. Yeah, so on, along that, that, uh, that thought process there, so if it's public, that $27,000 a year lease from the state, is the height responsible for that or are we responsible for that? I, you, are you asking us to be responsible? No, I, I mean, I, Fred, I mean, are we responsible for that or we're not? <laughs> According to the MAR, they provided that as amenities to the town. And we've read the MAR over and over again. My yeah. goodness. Yeah, Fred, is that included in there? I just want to make sure. 
Well, I'd like to see that agreement before I commented. I know there was a reference to uh, management rights um, right. in what was spoken, but I don't, I don't know what is, uh, is, I don't know what the details are in the agreement, and I, I'd need to see that. I yeah, can Bill add, though, that, that our charter defines our jurisdiction to extend to the shoreline on the bay side, which is different. Um, it's more limited than the references to our jurisdiction on the Atlantic side. So, yeah, uh, Bill Lauer had sent us something over, uh, and that that seemed to have some legal ease in that. And you know, Fred, have you had a chance to review that? No, I have not. Is that uh, what, was, he was sent that? that well, that's over well a week and week and a half ago, I think. Is when yeah, we that, got that, that's the covenants, uh, the declaration, uh, and the easement. And yeah. it, does have, it does have a couple of paragraphs in there. It, it basically uh, sets up Dewey Beach Enterprises as having responsibility for maintaining those public areas. Uh, but that in terms of the beach, um, it says Dewey Beach Enterprises acknowledges that the public beach area uh, is subject to the control of the town and that the town is entitled to impose and enforce requirements for public use of the public beach area. Okay. Uh, but all of the maintenance responsibility is, is the uh, responsibility of DBE. So that's the cleaning of that beach, et cetera, et cetera, correct? Right, that's right. And that was set up, like I say, in the MAR. And as part of the MAR. Originally uh, is there anything else in those covenants that we need to be aware of before we make rules? Who are you asking that of? Uh, Fred. <laughs> Mr. Townsend? Yeah, I mean, those are the covenants. I just wanna make sure we're, we're, we're in line. Well, this is a discussion today Right. Correct. Right. So, I guess um, that's that's a bridge we'll have to cross as we move towards determining how we're going to regulate this area. So I'll have to consider that between this meeting and whenever it is we we uh, uh, determine what rules make the best sense. Okay. All right. And just so I just thought of something. Mr. Townsend has to leave a little early today. What what time do you have to leave, Mr. Townsend? Uh, 1.45. So in the meantime, before 1.45, if anybody has any questions for Mr. Townsend, please make sure you ask those questions so that we can have it asked and answered in public. Uh, are there any other questions that the commissioners might have before we start deliberation about the, the rules in general that have been suggested? Mr. Zolper, you had your hand up? Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I could, I was there yesterday down on Van Dyke Street and as uh, Captain Fritchman alluded to, there are two, uh, I would call them hazardous areas. One of them is a pipe that comes out and there's a lot of water that comes out of this pipe. You can see it up here on the screen. I mean, there, is, there was just a ton of water coming out of that pipe. It's a cement pipe. And again, we don't know really where that water's coming from. And then there was a, there's an area that has some rocks uh, as you can see here, that are also, it's marked, but those are some rocks and there's a steel pipe out there. Those things need to be addressed before we open the beach for the summer. And I just bring it to the commissioner's attention. Thank you. And as Mr. Fritchman said earlier, uh, there are a hazard area that has to be marked and has to be taken care of before we uh, continue to allow people, swimmers to go out and around that area, especially children, correct? Yes, that's something that, you know, I'm willing to work with the Hyatt and go down there and make sure that it's done correctly. Um, but it's going to have to be something that needs to be addressed and it needs to be addressed soon. Remember, this is going to be, you know, when, when the lawsuits come and some someone will surely sometime, you know, when the lawsuits come, they're going to be say it's the Dewey Beach and we need to, we're going to sue Dewey. And when, with a shotgun effect amongst everybody else. So we just have to understand that we have to, Remember, it's, it's one of our beaches, just like any other beach, and we have to be responsible for, for it and for the safety effect of it. Mr. Jasinski, you had your hand up? I did not, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody, uh, Mr. Bauer? Yeah, and Dale, since you brought that up though, so this, whatever we come up with also applies to Reed Avenue, Dickinson Beach, Van Dyke, Dagsworthy, anywhere we have a beach, correct? And, unless we make some changes somewhere, it would, applied to, if we just say Bay Beach rules, it would apply to any beach right. on the Bay, 
So we have yeah. to be careful about what we say. You're correct. Okay. Yeah, because we have that kayak launch down at uh, Reed Avenue that was was put in. Be ashamed to say, hey, you can't use that now. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely, I agree. <laughs> Any other comments from commissioners before we? I, I'd like if if there's no problem, then I would like to press upon Mr. Persinger a little bit, and and there is a draft for discussion interim rule for Baywalk, Bayside Beach, and Gazebo. We might start on that if, if it's okay with the rest of the commissioners. Mr. Stevens? Who, uh, who prepared the amendments to this document? This is just a, conglom uh, a consolidation of all the comments that we had received at a point in time. Uh, so they're, they're totally unattributed and that's why I, I changed in the original draft of this, it came out with my initials on all of the comments, and these were not my comments. So I've changed <laughs> you know, the FD to indicate for discussion. They, uh, again, it came from a number of different uh, different. I was posts. trying to, thanks Gary, I was trying to figure out who FD was. Yeah. <laughs> FD? F FD, for oh, discussion. discussion. For well, discussion. I didn't know Fred had changed his last name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. T Mr. Per Persinger, would you like to? I remain to married to my, my current wife, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not changed my last name. <laughs> Mr. Persinger, would you like to take the initiative and start uh, out from the, I suggest sure. from the beginning, and we could at least discuss it. Remember, commissioners, this is only a discussion. This is not a vote. It's the time, though, to make your comments and make them well known. Um, sure. I mean, I would just like to go through this, uh, you know, from top to bottom and, and just take comments and, and see where we stand on each of these various points. Um, and the first point that I would start with, with respect to the public baywalk, um, should the baywalk be open 24-7, 365 days a year, or should there be, you know, some period of time, you know, during the, the early morning hours where it would make sense to, to have, that, have that closed during the season? Um, and not something I'm necessarily recommending, but just a, a point of discussion. Well, if you want comments, I'll, I'll give you a comment. It's my opinion right now, the uh, last call, and uh, excuse me, the closure of the establishment is, is at one o'clock, I believe. And uh, uh, it was my suggestion when it was initially brought up that maybe we would close the boardwalk or the baywalk, excuse me, at one o'clock. It was my suggestion amongst other people that we might put it off till two o'clock and give people a chance to clear the area. And that's why I was, I was for a 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. closure. That and the fact that I didn't, didn't think people that lived in the area would want people lingering on it all night long. That's just, Mr. Steven? Um, unfortunately, I have restless mind and, and usually I'm up at odd hours and going for runs at odd hours. And I understand your concept about lingering, but I don't think we should prohibit anybody from town who's from going for a walk or a run, regardless of their hours. Regardless I'm sorry, I, I acknowledge you. I'm, this is Mr. Persinger's uh, gig here. So go ahead, Mr. Stevens, but Mr. Persinger from now on, if, if you will acknowledge okay. people. That, that's go fine. Ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Steven. No, I said my point. I don't think we should. I, I will be, I could be up at four o'clock in the morning and running. So it's just, uh, I'm just saying, I don't think we should, we shouldn't have people lingering, whatever, however you want to say that. I understand that, but I don't think we should have hours of operation because it's, I, I would say that the bars and the restaurants are, are small or part of our town, but it's not, it's not, a, it's not a thing, something that everyone does. All right. I have a comment. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, you know, besides us, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm asleep at that time, but there's, uh, you know, servers and bartenders that get off their shift at one or two o'clock in the morning. They probably want to walk their dog, things like that, too. So, you know, we don't restrict it on a sidewalk. Why would we restrict it on a boardwalk? I mean, it's a public walkway. It's like any other walkway, in my opinion. So I, I, I'd be in favor of just not having a rule on it. And that's that's a, you know, if we have an issue, the police are going to enforce whatever riffraff would be going on. So. I think that's a police issue, not a commissioner issue. Any other thoughts about this uh, this issue? Uh, commissioner Jasinski? I, I think the real issue is whether um, 
people late at, in the middle of the night are really a disturbance to the people who, who live or are staying in the adjacent property, which is really primarily the Hyatt and to a lesser extent, maybe the Cove. Um, and I haven't heard anything, but has anyone heard anything where there's a late night revelry out there? No. No. Any, um, any other thoughts about this, this issue? Yeah, if we don't have any issues with it, I don't think we need to make a rule for it. Okay. Uh, then let's move on to the next issue. This is with respect to a lifeguard on the Baywalk, not, not, uh, not with respect to the beach. Um, and the question is, you know, do we even need this? Do we need to say that there's no lifeguard on duty? Um, I think at some point it was written that uh, at times there may be no lifeguard uh, on duty, but is there any expectation at all that we would have a lifeguard on duty uh, on the Baywalk? Any uh, comments on that? Commissioner yes. Bauer? Yeah, um, I don't, you know, if, if Todd wants to put a lifeguard back there and, and we can afford it, I'd say put one back there, but I, I don't see the need there, you know, Monday through Thursday, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Absolutely. We probably have somebody back there, but you know, the other days, I, I you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure the value of it. If, you know, especially if we have one or two people back there, why are we having a lifeguard watching one or two people? It's, uh, the, it's like the well, Maytag or Baywalk, not the beach. This is yeah, the, Bay the Baywalk is part of that. We're not going to put two lifeguards back there. It's going to be the same lifeguard I'm assuming. Correct. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure what the original intent was. I, did, I didn't draft this. I mean, I was looking yeah. at this as having a separate lifeguard, one for the Baywalk, one for the beach. Yeah. I, I, I think one is overkill. Two is definitely overkill. Commissioner Jasinski? I think we should be silent. I don't think there's an expectation when you're on a boardwalk, uh, even if part of it extends over the water, that there would be a lifeguard there. The place where people are thinking about lifeguards is on the beach yeah. where you naturally walk into the water, we discuss it under the beach rules. As far as the Baywalk goes, we should just not even discuss it, yes or no. Yeah. Great. Okay. Any other comments on that? Yeah, I've got a question here uh, for right? Bill Zolper. Hey, Bill, you know, let, assuming we don't have a lifeguard there on whatever days, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it happens to be, uh, should we put a sign up that that's a swim at your own risk? Do we need some signage there from, you know, to help protect ourselves? If, in case someone does sue us, like you have an unguarded public beach and you didn't know you didn't notice that to anybody. Yeah. So right now at the end of each one of the streets, we do have a big sign. And inside that sign case, there's all sorts of different things. And one of the things that are in there, it's like yesterday I was on Van Dyke Street on the ocean side, and it says swim at your own risk. On the bay side, there's a big sign. And inside that big, big uh, sign, there's another sign inside that says no lifeguard on duty, swim at your own risk. So we do have those posted right now. We may want to put a sign, the days Todd's not there, almost just like put one maybe somewhere else besides there. But right now we are covered. They are there on both the ocean side and the bay side. Okay. Okay, but, but specifically with respect to this, I, I'm not hearing any great sentiment for having a provision in here that addresses a lifeguard on the bay wall. Is that fair? fair that conclusion? is correct. It probably should be stricken. Yep. Okay. All right. Agreed. Let's move on to the next one. This was with respect to dogs. And again, we're talking about just the Baywalk. There are two issues here. First of all, adding some language that requires that dogs have a valid license uh, issued by the town of Dewey Beach. Um, uh, and I guess there are actually really three issues here. Uh, secondly, dogs must be on a leash. We don't have a provision like that in our code. Uh, what the code currently says is dogs must be under the owner's control. And then thirdly, uh, if we're gonna have this provision here, should there be, uh, should dogs be prohibited from the Baywalk uh, during uh, the hours of 9.30 to 5, 5.30 p.m. Each, each day during the season? Any comment? Uh, Mr. Perfinger? Yes, go ahead, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, my, I, again, we're talking about the Baywalk, correct? We're That's not right. talking. We're not talking about the beach That's area. Right. So it's my opinion that dogs probably ought to be allowed on the Baywalk, and that they, you know, of course, that all regulations according to dogs should be should be uh, enforced. And because it's such a confined area, 
at one of the rare times I would agree that Dewey ought to have a lease law in that area, in the Bay Walk itself, because there's, there's real lack of control when you have that closed in area. So just my opinion. So your, your opinion then is that they should, there should not be a time restriction? Uh, no, I, don't, I don't believe there should be a time restriction on the Bay Walk. Bay Walk in general, when it comes to dogs, I would think would be like walking your dog along the street. Okay. Any other comments? Commissioner Stevens? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking, and I think this is where my mindset is that we're, 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 we're looking at the Bay and we're looking at the Bay Beach and then trying to make rules as you come forth. I've always looked at the Bay Walk as the sidewalk. I have not looked at the Bay Walk as part of the beach. And I don't think we require people to, to get a license for their dog to walk on the street. Yes, they do get a license. Just to walk on the, on the street? Absolutely. On Highway 1? Oh, I didn't know that. They have to have a Dewey Beach dog license. I thought that was only on the beach. No. Nope. Hmm. All right. Any other comments? I yeah, I, I think, and I, I agree with Bill. I mean, I, I look at the they boardwalk is, is a, that's a street, you know, it's uh, essentially, that's the same, the sidewalk to me, but um, so whatever I think we assign, what's our rule for walking a dog down route one? Does, does it have to be leashed? I mean, that's I, correct. You're I don't right. think I've seen anybody unleashed with their dog on route one, but well, uh, maybe it happens. I don't know. <laughs> when when you I, have an I older dog, dog, it happens. Day, Paul. I, what's that, Bill? When you have an older dog, it happens. It does. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever we say on it, I mean, I, I think the wording that you keep your dog under control, whatever that control happens to be, I think that's the judgment of the owner. Uh, that's my two cents worth. Uh, Commissioner Jasinski, do you have a comment? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with what everyone's saying here. I mean, it is kind of a street, you know, it is kind of a, 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 a sidewalk. Um, you know, certainly dogs can be there anytime people can be there. Um, you know, the leash versus non-leash, I think, I think there's always kind of been an assumption in town that people take their dogs off leash on the beach not in town, but some people walk their dogs without a leash. They know the dog's not going to jump out and grab it. Right. Kind of getting, we're kind of getting into the minutia here. Dogs are allowed on the board, on the Bay Walk, and that's kind of it. Agreed. We have a lot of dog lovers in this town. So what I'm hearing is that, um, you know, we consistent with the rest of the, the experience or the requirements in the town. Dogs would have to have a valid license, but there would not be any time restriction nor would there be a requirement uh, for a dog to be on a leash when on the bay walk. Is that pretty much the consensus? Uh, perhaps not yes. unanimous, but I think generally a consensus. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. Um, sorry, I'm working from a couple of different screens here. The, um, um, then the next section, I think we've talked about a little bit already, and I believe we've now moved on to the uh, uh, to the public beach and gazebo section of the of the rules. Uh, uh, Mr. Zolper, sir, just one comment before we move there for the public bay walk. We may want to, and, and I think Fred should weigh in on this. Um, maybe have a sign that says "No diving," and I know that seems pretty obvious, but there was an incident that happened at another location in Dewey Beach where somebody jumped off an area that was over the water and they uh, were, were seriously injured. Uh, just something to consider. Thank you. Okay, well, the, the first uh, provision that we can talk about under public beach and gazebo. Uh, uh, Mr. Persinger, I had a yes, comment. Ahead. On the I'm sorry. Previous I had a, this is Dave. I had a comment on the previous section. Oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. Sure, so we, we didn't talk about the fact that DBE is gonna petition for strategic built-in seating along the Bay Walk, which I think is a great idea. Um, but as I kind of rethink through this, and we were talking about the 24 seven aspect of the hours, I think we need to kind of think about this. Um, I think seating on the Bay Walk would be good. It would give people more enjoyment. A lot of people who maybe have mobility issues would appreciate the chance to be able to sit down and relax there. I think it's a great idea, but there are also people who are told, Hey, it's last call. You got to go. Who also would appreciate the, the chance to sit down there at two o'clock in the morning. And I, I'm very sensitive to uh, there kind of being a natural gathering place in front of somebody's kind of hotel room or somebody's uh, condominium. And I think we should really think about 
this 24 seven in light of if seating is put in on the Baywalk. I think those two things might be a little bit of at odds with each other. That's just my, my thing on that. Okay, any other comments about that issue? Yeah, I mean, I, I wanna go back to, if we look at that Bay Boardwalk as a street, you know, we put park benches on up and down Route 1, and that sort of attracts the same argument on there. So well, what do we do? Do we remove those? If we don't want people sitting down on them, we shouldn't put them on. Uh, I don't think it really matters the time. I mean, if, if someone's out of line, I think it's a police issue, not a, right. you know, the, the, we're, we're not, we're not going to give somebody a citation for sitting on a park bench. I, mean, I think that's silly. Well, I mean, there may be an issue of sleeping on that park bench. Uh, well, so the, I mean, the issue would be sleeping in public, right? We have an ordinance about that. I mean, that would apply everywhere, not just on a boardwalk, right? Right. A lot more, a lot more likely to 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 sleep on the uh, on the baywalk, I think, than the bench on on Route One. But uh, you're wrong about that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> any, any other any other thoughts about that, uh, Commissioner? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, in order to make it a police issue, Commissioner Bauer, you yep. have to have a regulation that the police can can enforce. Right. You know, and if you don't have a regulation, then you're going to have you're going to have. Uh, excuse me, I should be talking, Mr. Persinger. He's had enough this issue. That's okay. Go ahead. If you if you if you don't have a regulation, in some way, shape, or form, it's going to be a problem, and you're going to have people, you yeah. know, who are passed out and or sleeping on those benches and it's going to be a problem for the town and for right. the people who live in that area. Right. And, I, and, and Bill Zolper, uh, this might be a, a police question for you. Uh, is there a state uh, law about that? Yeah, there might be some type of loitering law, but I think, um, right. you know, like here in, in Dewey Beach, you can't be on the beach, I think, between the hours of one and five in the morning. If you want to go for a run on the beach, you're not supposed to be running on the beach mm -hmm. between one and five in the morning. Now, out of Route One, it's a whole nother set of rules, of course. Mm -hmm. But I'd have to look into that and get back to you, uh, get you an answer, Commissioner. Yeah, and I, I just think whatever we do on the on the Bay Boardwalk, I think we should apply townwide if that's the if that's the case. I mean, there's no sleeping on benches. I mean, that's I, I would be yeah. just as annoyed as somebody on the middle of Route One sleeping as as I would be on the, on a park I think bench. What it comes down to is is nuisance uh, and disorderly. Right. And that would be a criminal violation, whether they have a bench there or not. If they're making noise walking, if they're making noise just hanging out there, that's going to be a violation. Right. That needs to be addressed. It's not really the bench. Yeah, yeah. We just need to be consistent. I mean, we have a law for this. Uh, I think that's what we need to enforce. But if we chose to do so, we could build into uh, Section 65 of the code, which governs beaches. We could build a provision in there that would prohibit. Um, sleeping on on the, those benches on the Baywalk, if we chose to do so, I believe is that yeah, is that not correct. My point is just apply it equally everywhere. I mean, not just oh, here, but right, no, do I whatever. Understand. I understand. Um, any other comments on the, on the Baywalks? Okay, so with respect to the uh, to the public beach and the gazebo, um, the the issue here is lifeguards. Um, there is a suggestion, suggested wording here, depending upon conditions, the town of Dewey Beach may, may assign a Dewey Beach patrol lifeguard to the Van Dyke area public beach during certain summer hours. Uh, appropriate signage shall be in place to notify the public that use of the beach is at the public's risk uh, when a lifeguard is not present. It sounds like we already have some signage already that covers that latter port, but is the language here sufficient so that um, Todd could make um, decisions about uh, the need for uh, a lifeguard at various times throughout the summer season? Or should we have something more specific uh, in terms of specific days on which the, the beach would be covered by a lifeguard and days on which it might not be? What are the, any comments on that? Um, I, I, I don't have, I can't see, I can only see four people in my gallery view. Mm. So if I call you out of order or don't call on you at all, please yell at me. Mm. Uh, Commissioner Jasinski, I do see your, your hand. I like the way you have it written. I think it's an administrative decision uh, of Todd's in conjunction with the town manager. Okay. Any other comments? Persinger. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I, 
I would think that the way it's written would would allow the the town and the captain of the lifeguard in particular to staff it as reasonable and and as best suited for Dewey Beach. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. So Gary, this is the second point, right? The depending on upon conditions, that's one you're referring that's to. Right. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. We skipped over the first one though about the curfew. Yeah, I I have I had just um, I'm I'm skipping over ones for which I didn't have comments. So, but certainly let's go back to that. One. Yeah, I mean, and this is something you know. To, uh, do we want to apply curfew to the Bay Beach at one o'clock? Well, we have a curfew, such a curfew on the ocean beach. Right. Um, and I think the, the reason this is here is there's an expectation that we, we should apply the same uh, regulation to the do to the Bayside beach. Are you, are you saying we should remove that? Is that your, your suggestion? I, I you know, I, so that's, that's going to be a, a police issue to enforce bill. I don't know if, your background on this to put up, you can put on your police hat again, but uh, you know, the issue of being there is one thing. I mean, it, you know, because you know, I've, I've, I've seen people walk their dogs there after one o'clock in the morning, you know, when they get home. So, you know, that we're, we're prohibiting that at that point, but I'm not sure the value we're, we're getting for it. I mean, if it's, it's, it's a loitering issue, you know, I think we're going to enforce loitering, not this is, you know, just closed at one o'clock. Yeah, I, I think that the purpose of the law on the beach side, at least, is to have for people from gathering on the beach or going down there and drinking on the beach and doing some other things. I, 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 it gives the, the police officers the ability to use their their objection uh, to, to, right. to make an arrest or not. Or, so I think it really it gives them the ability to to say, hey, you know, what, you guys are making way too much noise. We came down here once, told you you need to quiet down. You haven't yeah, quieted right. down. So we're going to write you an ordinance because you're on the beach past one o'clock. I don't think you're going to find the police officer just going down, locking people up for walking their dog down there at one in the morning, but it gives them the ability to enforce something when necessary. Yep. I agree. Yeah. Bill, you know, Bill Stevens taking a jog at uh, two in the morning. Uh, I don't think I want to see him get a ticket. <laughs> I agree. Yes. You have any other comments on that bill? Yeah. I, I don't, you know, you know, the loitering part of it, I think that's how the police are going to enforce it, whether we have a curfew or not. So I'm not hearing any support for eliminating that necessarily, other than perhaps Commissioner Bauer. Is that is that true? Okay. Uh, all right. Coming back then to some of the others. Um, okay. Gary, can I ask? Is it sure? Is it possible? And I, I don't want to. So I look at the gazebo kind of like the walk. Is it possible to put the gazebo have it so that it's bay walking gazebo rules and then the the public beach rules because the gazebo is off like it's almost it's, it's off the beach it is well it's i'm sure it's out. possible to do so is do others think it's de desirable to do so uh, i just open up because i again I, I understand the loitering i understand uh town manager zolper is wanting you know you know we're looking at public safety uh, right of use and i just i guess i look just look at the gazebo the reason why we don't have people on the beach is for the risk, right? That somebody's, you know, that they're going to hurt themselves and et cetera. I guess I just look at the gazebo separate. So I'll just open it up for everyone else to comment. Any comments? I, I would rather it be con considered where it is considered now, considered along with the beach. It's contingent to the beach. It's, it's part and parcel in that area of the beach. The, the only thing I would say, if you could recognize me, Gary, I guess. Um, no, go ahead, go ahead. Is um, uh, I, I don't want to make us too many different sets of different rules. It just kind of gets a little bit kind of crazy. But if there's anything in the public beach and gazebo that we need to specifically call out with the gazebo, let's just call it out. If there needs to be some something that's a little bit different that we want to say is different, we just say what okay. that is. But I don't want a whole separate set of rules for the gazebo. Okay. But David, that's not what I was saying. I was just, I was saying that the, it, maybe we have public bay walk and gazebo. Oh, I got you. Just put it in and the And then other down place. below public beach. That's so the, all I was saying. I know what you're saying. All right. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts about that? 
is that something we should try to have reflected in a new draft, uh, combining the gazebo with the Baywalk rules? I do. I think that's good. Anybody else have a view on that? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, do you have a view on that? Yeah, you know my view. I said it earlier. I think it should be left where it is now. Okay. I, I have not thought carefully enough about it to, to express an opinion at this point, but um, so we, we have a couple of people in favor of it. I, we, let me try to uh, see what we could do with that. Um, you know, maybe we even have, I don't know, I don't want to say we have two different drafts, but I'm just not sure what's involved in, in dividing those, those up. I'd have to take a closer look at that. Um, uh, so if we can come back to the, what are now designated as the, the beach and the gazebo rules. Um, this is the issue that we've talked about that the town should, uh, shall assist with determining a suitable distance for mooring on Rehoboth Bay to assure the safety of persons recreating in the bay. Docking to the pier or bay, bay walk is, is prohibited. Um, you know, I, I guess the, what the original question here was, was how do you define suitable? Uh, and we've talked a little bit about that. I think we had a, a hundred foot distance for, foot. Um, yeah, yeah. for any motorized boats. Um, but then I thought that there wasn't there also uh, some guidance that uh, you could be within the 100 feet, uh, at least in terms of the DENREC regulations. Um, as long as you were maintaining a very slow speed, only enough to maintain steerage. Did I hear that correctly? Is that? I, I... Yeah, boats on boats on the bay side are 100 feet from all swimmers, docks, uh, everything in the water is 100 feet on the uh, bay side, and the jet skis are 300 feet. But but that's that's the what you described. I think as the uh, the no wake slow speed uh, regulation, which DENREC can enforce. Correct, we can do slow no wake. Okay, but this would go beyond that in terms of our own code, if in fact we can enforce something 100 feet out into the water since we don't technically have jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you for, for an answer on that. I guess that's more a question for our town attorney to address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, and, and that's what you guys will have to determine whether you have the authority to promulgate uh, town ordinance you know, 100 feet out into the water. Uh -huh. It's kind of what you'll have to figure out. And, you know, even if you came up with that town ordinance, uh, you know, we could assist, uh, you know, making contact with the boat and bringing them into the dock. But if it's town ordinance, the town of Dewey Police Department is going to be the ones that are going to have to take enforcement matters on. Well, in terms of the, the rules and regulations that we have here, this is written, uh, you know, non-specifically. It, it just talks cool. about determining a suitable distance uh, for mooring. Um, is this sufficient in terms of the rules and regulations that we want to put forward, or do we need something more specific here? Commissioner, Gary, I think it needs to be more specific because it's not really a rule, right? It just. Well, yeah, it's more direction. It's, statement. To, it's to, not a rule. Yeah, it's more direction to the town to do something. You're correct. That's right. Any other thoughts? I mean, should we put the, uh, the hundred feet at, in there? Is that, that what we should, should propose? Uh, I think it makes Why it specific. I, I like that idea. Okay. Gary, why don't we put it in like at least 100 foot so that we have the ability, if there's an issue, to move it? Okay. All right. Can't we just say swimming within designated areas? Yeah, that works too. Yeah. Because I think we're committed to the, the whole buoy concept of protecting the swimmers. So wherever that buoy is, we'll, we'll set the guidelines. Right. Now, this question, are, are we going to mark these at Dickinson and uh, uh, Van Dyke, Dagsworthy? We're going to mark them all or just this one? Um, are we going to have buoys? I think that's what I think that's what Paul is yeah. asking. That's what, I'm yeah, sorry, that's what I was asking. Is that our intention? I mean, yeah, I just whatever we do, I just want us to be consistent. And not to say, yeah, you're allowed to do it on this Bay Beach, but you're not allowed to do it on that Bay Beach, and et cetera, et cetera. Like I was thinking, you know, when we're talking about the enforcement of the one to five, so uh, you know, Phil Winkler and Ellen walk their dog, uh, happy goes for a walk at uh, 1.30 or something, and <laughs> on Reed Avenue, he's in violation. 
<laughs> so you can't do that. You know, we got to apply them equally. Whatever we do, I think we just need to apply it across the board. Mr. Pressinger. Yes, go ahead, Mayor. Yeah, I, I think we have to use some general logic here also. We I do. agree. I, I agree with Mr. Bauer that, you know, we have to look forward to eventually these rules would have to be enforced or limited, either limited to one beach or enforced for every beach. That's eventually. Right now we're talking about a beach that was created with the town and Dewey Beach Enterprises involved for the town to operate as a public beach. And we need to understand that we don't want a Wild West show what, like we had on the ocean beaches right. and the Bayside in previous years. We don't ever want to go back to that. And if we don't have any regulations on these beaches, you know it and I know it's going to end up maybe what, when I'm gone, maybe when Mr. Bowers is gone, maybe when everybody else is gone, but it's going to end up the old Kegster routine, you know, because you don't have any regulations. We need to regulate it as if it were a swimming beach. And that's what it is. You know, Dale, I think you make, a, I'm sorry, J David, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, I think for purposes of kind of what Dale was saying, for right now, the regulations are just the one beach that we're primarily talking about. If other beaches are created or get larger or start to get used in a way frequently, we can look at it, but let's not complicate things. Let's just say these are the regulations for this beach. And until it's named the Dale Cook Beach, can we just say that this is the Bayside Beach so we know exactly what we're talking about? They'll never name it the Dale Cook Beach, I guarantee you. <laughs> okay, any other thoughts on this issue? All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, this is um, Dewey Beach Enterprises and the town will coordinate routine beach cleaning services. Um, it just seemed a little vague. I think, you know, in the, uh, the covenants that we received from DBE, it is clear that um, the, the cleaning service is the responsibility of DBE. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we could leave this, you know, nonspecific here, not, maybe not even address this at all. Um, you know, this would be an agreement that, that isn't necessarily something that we have to put forth for the public. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you know, there has to be some coordination with the town, but I think the bottom line is DB has the responsibility here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, uh, any thoughts, any other comments? Gary, person here, comment. Yeah, go ahead, Mayor. Um, uh, I, the one thing that came up when I started seeing DBE, DBE at various spots and this DBE is responsible for this or coordinate for that, is that we need to think about the possibility that it's not always gonna be DBE. It, would, it should be DBE and successor organization or, mm -hmm. or some other form of comment. We, we probably shouldn't designate one company. We should, if we're gonna designate, we should say and, and or their successor. Okay, all right, that's a fair point. That's a good point. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with Dale completely. We shouldn't have any other entity identified in our rules. Okay. Um, Mr. Person, Mr. Jasinski has his hand. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, Gary, you're probably doing it on your iPad. Um, I, I, for stuff that's posted to the public, it's irrelevant that the town and DBE, how they're coordinating the cleaning. Um, we already have that spelled out in the MAR, that's an agreement with the town. I think we can just be silent on it. I don't see any reason to spell that out in the rules. Right. Yeah, I, I, think right. That's, I think that's right. Okay, can we move on? I have on a suggestion. I have a suggestion to make it uh, you know, very clean, uh, you know, unambiguous area here. Why don't we name it by the address? The, the, I'm sorry. The address of the property is really, you know, that's, that's whoever owns it at that point. You know, that's sort of includes, uh, you know, it, the responsibility oh, okay. belongs to. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what the right term is. I mean, the, our attorney could probably give us some guidance on what would be best to use. There. Right. Um, there's no mailing address right now. There's a, there's a parcel that's been assigned to it. And in response to a question I got earlier, uh, these covenants do acknowledge at paragraph 12 that DBE, DBE understands and, and these covenants apply to any successors in interest as well um, that 
the town is entitled to impose and enforce requirements for public use of the public beach area, which is defined by the attached map. So the state of Delaware through DENREC is a party to the covenants and that seems to settle the question of our authority over the, over the public beach area it does not speak to our authority beyond the shoreline. Right. Um, so that remains to be seen. Right. Okay, so moving on. Um, I haven't heard anyone um, object to this provision that the beach chairs and umbrellas are permitted on the Bayside public beach. I think everybody believes that should, should be available. Question is, should we prohibit uh, tent-like structures. Uh, this is a, you know, fairly limited area. Is there any need to uh, uh, put some sort of regulation on larger structures other than just the individual umbrellas and, and regular chairs? Any any thoughts about that, uh, Commissioner Bauer? Yeah. Uh, what what is the rule on the ocean? We we don't have one on the ocean that I, that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, so I, I'd hate to put a restriction here that we don't have over there. So. Whatever we do, just be consistent about it. If we're going to disallow it here, we disallow it there as well. So, yeah, I, you know, that's to, yeah, just we, we just need to be consistent. That's all, Mr. Persinger. Uh, yes, go ahead, Mayor. Yeah, I, I, although I agree that tent-like structures should be eliminated from all the beaches, just as Rehoboth has done it. Uh, I asked Todd about this last year. And he said at that time, he did not want to put the restriction in on tent-like umbrella structures or shade structures. So, although I, I disagree with him, I'm just telling you what, what he informed me of at that time. Mr. Zolper has asked you. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Percier, so I will re-engage with Todd about that. I think that is something that we definitely need to look into considering some of the problems and issues and the size of the tents and what could actually go on inside the tent. So I will revisit that with Todd. The other thing I would ask is we should consider our current vendor, whether or not those concessions should also, um, right now it's Dave Lynham, whether he should have the ability to uh, rent chairs and umbrellas over there. Could I ask uh, yeah. a question, Mr. Persinger? Could I ask a question? Yes, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, Mr. Zolper, uh, what does that contract read? I know it gives him exclusive rights, but it doesn't say to the beaches, beach area or does it say to the ocean beach area because if it says to the beach area this is a beach area that he could claim that he has exclusive rights to great question so it says concession area on the uh, between the atlantic ocean and the east side of the dune bordering the north and south by established mm -hmm. town lines which are generally described as being between collins street at the south southern boundary to the distance of approximately 500 feet north of Chesapeake Street at the town's northern boundary and to rent beach equipment, including umbrella chairs and, and refreshments. And, so again, and it, it says the Atlantic Ocean in the east side of the dune. Right, then, then I would agree that it does not give him exclusive rights to presently. We have to, as commissioners, when we do redo, renew that contract, we would have to decide what we wanted to do, whether it includes the bay beaches or not. And the question is, is that what we want? I mean, I think we have to uh, make a decision about what we want. Do we want the same vendor to have that same uh, concession right? Any other, anyone else have thoughts about Mr. that? Mr. Jaczynski had his hand up. I, I was just gonna say, um, the way it's written here allows us to have it be one vendor or the town to have multiple vendors. And I think that's okay. I think it's administrative. We're just saying that somebody can be out there renting them and the town decides whether they do one contract or multiple contracts. That's a good point. And any other yeah. thoughts about that? Mm -hmm. okay. Then the uh, the next part of that, the, the bullets that are suggested as additions here, these, these are prohibitions on the ocean beach. Um, should we have the same prohibitions uh, of uh, drinking funnels and beverage containers, number of be beverage containers, um, glass containers, et cetera? Uh, any thoughts about that? Commissioner? I do. Mayor, I, I, I think we should try to stick with the restrictions that are on the beach and what's per permitted on the ocean beach and make it the same thing that's permitted on the Bay Beach. The Bay Beach is much more congested than the, than the ocean beach. And, and so we have to think about that. And, 
And it leaves it up to, just like any regulation, it leaves it up to the lifeguards and the captain of the lifeguards to enforce those regulations. And I don't think we've had any problem with the way they've been enforcing the regulations on the ocean beach. And I don't think you can take it to extreme, of course, the possibilities of what could be, but I think what should be will be what we have now on the ocean beach. And I would hope that we leave it uh, the same regulations on the Bay Beach. Any other thoughts about this? Any disagreement with that uh, position of the mayor? <laughs> You'll get a lot there. I'll just disagree. <laughs> is, is that just for the heck of it, or is that a real yeah. substance of disagreement? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, Mr. Persinger and um, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I've got to um, excuse myself from the meeting. I apologize. Thank you for being here. We appreciate your help. We'll send you Thanks, lots Fred. and lots of questions. Good. Thank you. Well, just before you before you leave, sure. just the, the issue of alcohol on the beach. Um, there are a number of people, many people who would like to be able to sit on the beach with, you know, with a drink in hand and enjoy mm -hmm. that. You can't clearly can't do that on the ocean beach. Um, is it desirable? Is it feasible? Is it, you know, uh, something that could be done legally on the Bay Beach if, in fact, there was enough support for doing so? I'd like to get some thoughts on the table about that. And, you know, if the uh, town attorney, has, has he left already? Uh, if no, the town attorney has any thoughts about that, perhaps you could weigh in. Well, I believe our rules are written in such a way, our ordinances are written in such a way that drinking is prohibited during a certain time of year in public places, which, which if um, that's got a good basis in the law, then that would suggest to me that we could, um, we could allow drinking during um, certain times of the year and in certain public places. So. Uh, I think it's possible. That would be my off the cuff response. It, it would be possible to permit it if you were inclined to do it. Okay. Yeah. Any, any uh, other thoughts, yeah. comments? I, I'll weigh in on that one. Uh, we've received quite a few uh, emails from, from people. Actually, I don't, I don't even know what the final count was. I, I sent them all to you to have them read into the record, but uh, a lot of people like that. I mean, and, and they'll, you know, they, one of the emails, I forget the person that sent it, but um, they talked about how people liked k Pasa, how you sat and your feet were in the sand and it was enjoyable. And, uh, you, know, it, you know, to me, I mean, if, if people are responsible, there's no issue. I don't, I don't really care if someone's having a beer on the beach as long as they're responsible and not, a, you know, not a, you know, making a, themselves a nuisance around others. But, uh, you know, if that's something we can do like that, Bay Beach is contained. I mean, from a policing issue uh, standpoint, that would probably be the easiest one we could. Uh, there's only one way to go. You can run into the bay or <laughs> go down Van Dyke Street. There's no other way you're getting on. So uh, I, th I think it would be relatively easy to police a confined area like that. And, you know, frankly, I saw a lot of it last summer and I don't think we've really had any issues with it. So I, I think it's something that people would like. But again, I mean, we, you know, we, we want to, you know, we want to avoid the nuisances, you know, aspect of it. So I think as long as it's policed well, uh, I don't think it's an issue. Any other comments? Mr. Perfect. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, well, again, I'd remind everybody that in order to make it a police issue, you have to have a rule or regulation that, they, that they're going to enforce. Right. Otherwise, it doesn't become a police issue just out of thin blue air. So... You know, I, I would remind you again what happened on the beach in Dewey Beach before we put the rules and regulations in on the ocean side. It was a free for all. Mm -hmm. This beach will be a free for all and a nuisance on the bay if we start uh, making it easier to drink alcohol. I, I, I am an alcohol drinker at times, very, not very often, but I enjoy it. I like a cold beer on a hot summer day. I, I don't think we should, we should allow alcohol on this beach and not on the ocean beach. Any other thoughts? Commissioner Jasinski? So it's, it's kind of an odd conversation to have, but 
you know, Dale's pointing out the police can't enforce something if there's no rule against it. You know, the reality is when, when people are kind of quiet and minding their own business and are discreet, you know that there's not a big enforcement issue. Um, but once you, kind of, once you kind of take the restrictions away, a lot of people will decide, well, that's where I want to go if I want to kind of have a, have a party. And, you know, it's, it's really up to the public at large, whether that's the kind of atmosphere they want to have or they want to have an atmosphere where, you know, it's family friendly and, you know, sometimes people are discreet. Someone might say something to you, but that's really about it, right? And um, from my perspective, I think that uh, this beach is new. It's going to be very popular. We haven't had really a, uh, a full season with it. And I just, I, I kind of, I kind of blew, a little bit concerned about what it might turn into if we just say alcohol consumption is allowed during the summertime on this beach. Any other thoughts? Yeah, I, I would just say, I, I don't know. I haven't thought enough about this, this particular issue. I don't know, first of all, what's feasible. And that's why I turned first to our town attorney. I'd like to get a firmer sense of what, what it is we in fact could do. Uh, and then I think it's really important to hear from the major stakeholders you know, around that area uh, in terms of whether or not we should do something that's very different than what's allowed on the ocean beach and provide some sort of opportunity for having alcohol on the beach. I mean, I think it's, for me, I could leave it as an open question at this point. I, I would not you know, come down one way or the other. Again, I'd like to know more about what's feasible at this point. Any, uh, any other thoughts? Uh, just one, Gary, Stevens? you know, yeah. it's, I, I, I'm going back up and kind of jumped down to the consumption of alcohol because of uh, the attorney leaving. Right. And if, if we are moving towards not allowing alcohol on that beach, I don't know, I don't know that we need to limit above the number of beverages. And I've never seen anybody drink out of a funnel unless <laughs> it was an alcoholic beverage. So I don't know that we need that specifically in there. You don't do diet coats out of a funnel? I tried milk once. It wasn't a good, yeah. good experience. I, I can imagine. Well, I have to tell you, ask any college student. They all do it, <laughs> when they, especially when they have parties, yeah. and especially when nobody's around to, to stop them from doing it. You, you'll see it all the time. And uh, uh, these rules were put in when maybe funnels were very popular in public, but they're still right. popular at parties. All right. Uh, yeah. So we move on. Yeah, to, I, just, uh, I just want to weigh in one one more thing on that. I mean, you know, and I know Dewey Beach from thirty plus years ago. That uh, yeah, it was it was crazy. But you know, like I look, you look at Indian Beach. Is Indian Beach uh, out of control? They you know they they consume alcohol on the beach every day. They've been doing it since it's forever. But I, I don't look at Indian Beach as a wild and woolly place. I mean, but that's what I mean. I mean, I think people can be responsible, but you want to, you know, and I guess build from a police aspect, uh, we want to police public uh, drunkenness or drunken disorderly. And I think that's the law that we enforce, not the fact that someone had a glass of wine and watched the sunset. Yeah. So like right now you can go down on the beach and have a drink down here and, and it's legal. Right. And I think that was um, Commissioner Persinger's question to, to the attorney. But if you go down there and you start raising a lot of noise and you have start having some issues, the police are going to come down and they are going to use their common sense. And if you need to get locked up, you're going to get locked up. So I think right. that could be the same. You could apply that there depending on what you want to do with the, the bay side on this or on, on the beach on Van Dyke. But uh, the police officers could enforce a disorderly. They could enforce a number of different things. It's just a matter of... Um, the police officers making that judgment when it comes time to make that arrest. Right. I want to be clear about oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Jasinski, you had a comment? I want to be clear about one thing so people understand what we're talking about. Today, from May 15th to September 15th, it's not legal to drink in public anywhere in Dewey Beach, which includes the sidewalks, the Bay Beach, and the Ocean Beach. Between September 15th and May 15th, it is, it is legal to do so. And that is, that is the difference with the laws we have on the books today. So the real question is, are we gonna carve out the Bay Beach as being an area where the consumption of alcohol in public is allowed between May 15th and the, September 15th when it's not presently allowed? And that's what Fred said would be possible, but we don't have it presently in the right. ordinance. Thank you. Any, any thoughts about that clarification? 
I mean, I, I think if nothing else, the provision that we have here says that consumption of alcohol on the public beach is prohibited at all times. That would seem to be in conflict with our um, with our uh, current code uh, in terms of the restriction only during the season. So we would have to change that in the rules. But uh, I think that would make we, sense, Gary. Yeah, for whether consistency. Or not we beyond that, I, I think we leave it for now as it is, um, and and you know we can revisit if necessary later. Uh, moving back up one bullet point. Uh, I'm sorry, two bullet points uh, with respect to uh, dogs and dogs being available or being uh, allowed on the beach. Right now, the provision that we have here would would mirror, in essence, the um, provision that we have on the Oceanside beaches that during the season, dogs would not be allowed on the beach between 930 uh, and 530 each day. Um, there was a uh, an addition here that uh, uh, where there would be a small area that would be designated just for, for pet relief, in essence. And I think that's the area that Todd was talking about earlier that had been fenced off with some sort of snow fencing. Um, any, that's any now been plannings in those areas. So we'd have to designate a new area. OK, all right. I, I have not been over to take a look at that. Um, looks, looks great, by the way. So, so what's the thinking here? Are, are, should we go with a policy that mirrors what we have on the, uh, the ocean beach during the season? Or are we looking for more flexibility here as some people have, have suggested? Commissioner Bauer? Yeah, Ashley, um, mm -hmm. the emails we got, I, I think the dogs were mentioned in not all of them, but probably most of them. Uh, but we do have a lot of dog lovers in this town. And uh, you know, again, it's one of those things, as long as people are responsible and they're keeping their dog under uh, leash and under control or, or however we want to term that, I think that's the operative part of it. But people like having their dogs with them. Uh, we haven't had issues with it. Doesn't mean we'll, we never will, but, uh, you know, we haven't had issues. I, you know, I'd like to still, you know, have, uh, just keep allowing the dogs back there. Any other thoughts about that? Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh... My personal opinion is it should probably be what is being done now on the ocean beaches, and there should not be a division of, of regulation. Uh, if there were uh, a, if you were to vote to uh, allow dogs on the beach during, uh, during normal business time, so to speak, between nine and five, I would say only in a dog area. And I, I would, uh, I have been over there numerous times. Uh, I, I won't say numerous times, not numerous times. I've been over there a few times. And out of the few times that I've been over there, three out of the few times that I've been over there, I've watched dogs urinate on people's blankets because it, it does get crowded over there. And, and that area is so congested it's 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 worth much worse than per square foot. It's going to be much worse, I think, than the ocean beaches because it's going to start to get very crowded once it's known that you can drink on the beach and once it's known that uh, the other normal beach regulations don't persist. I would, uh, you know, our our police captain, excuse me, our captain of uh, lifeguards would would not like to have any dogs at all because of the seriousness of dog bites that he's, that he's, it's been part of his duty to take care of. So uh, I, I wouldn't go that far, but I wouldn't, wouldn't want to change from one area of beach to the other. And the comment about the emails that we got, you know, a lot of those had the exact same wording in them. You know, it was obvious that somebody pushed it to, people to to write and I would venture a guess that if you put out an email and suggested email to to visitors to Dewey and homeowners to Dewey about uh, um, a lot of things about drinking on the beach they would initially tell you yes and then when they found out what the problem is they would tell you please stop it that's all I have to say uh, Commissioner Jasinski so, um, Dale, you touched on one thing, but it's, it's kind of important in a broader context. 
And that's what uh, our captain of the lifeguards, Todd Fritchman, had to say. He, he talked about dogs. Uh, he talked about uh, buoys and swimming and safety. He talked about what kinds of things could be launched. And specifically, it's not just his recommendation as head of the lifeguards. It's also the fact that he's got to, uh, for lack of a better word, on days when it's crowded, he's going to have a lifeguard there. And he's and his people are responsible for the safety. And so when he says an issue is a safety issue and he kind of makes us aware of it, I, I think we kind of have a responsibility to go along with that guidance unless we have um, uh, objective evidence that that he's wrong on this on the uh, on the public safety issues. So I, I kind of want to defer to what our captain of the lifeguard says from a public safety perspective. Uh, Commissioner Stevens, you had a comment? Uh, yes, Gary, thank you. So um, I, I want to echo a little bit of what David said. I mean, the captain of the lifeguards came forth. We have a public potential public safety issue uh, that needs to be addressed. I think what we've had in the past on the beach has worked. I am a dog lover. Unfortunately, ours passed away last year, but we're looking forward to getting another. Uh, we did take advantage of uh, the beaches in the morning and after 5.30 to get her out there and walk. Uh, I can tell you that you know, I don't, I don't want to restrict anybody's happiness, but I, there's too many times that I've seen people sneak dogs onto the beach and it's 100 degrees out and I felt bad more, I felt bad for the dog, you know, because it's just not a, not a position that the dog should be in regardless of the owner's ignorance. Um, I think consistent approach here on the bay and the beach side is, is warranted for dog safety, for public safety, and uh, to allow the, the lifeguards to do, their, to do their responsibility. Now, I, I come back to the touches upon a comment before about the bay walk. Um, I, I don't mind if people are walking their dog. And I guess that's where the issue versus having the dog tied up and or uh, as part of their, their, their unit. But then again, you know, I guess that's where I'd, I wouldn't be, I would be, I wouldn't be opposed to somebody walking in an area, kind of like what Paul was talking about, like if it's uh, to walk. But again, I don't think it's going to be good for us in the long run if there's dogs on that beach. Okay. Any other thoughts about that? I mean, I just from my own perspective, um, I also own a dog, um, rather large dog. <laughs> and for a dog to be, do. Uh, yes, and for a dog to be <laughs> on, the, on the beach, uh, and to rely upon just having control of the dog as opposed to the dog being on a leash, I think would be uh, very unwise for us to allow something like that. Um, you know, I, I don't know how crowded that, that beach gets. I, my perception was it, it was not that crowded during the past year, but I think we're going to have a very different season this year. Um, the, the only possible change I might think of considering is, is allowing a dog on the beach during the season, during those uh, normally restricted hours, but, but only if the dog were on a leash. Um, you know, there's, there's some attractiveness and some benefit to, to being able to sit on the beach with your dog beside you, as long as you clearly have, have control of the leash. But I'm also perfectly comfortable with leaving things just consistent with the way they are on the, the ocean side. Um, any other comments? All right, let's move on to uh, volleyball activity. The, the, um, uh, provision here is that volleyball activities confined to the established court on Dickinson Street. Uh, no private volleyball post may be erected on the Van Dyke public beach area. Um, and then the question is, should off-season volleyball be allowed with town permits and management by, by the Hyatt? Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, you know, that I mean, that's an amenity back there that would like to, you know, if we can get some permits for it. I mean, it, we've had people approach us before about having volleyball tournaments and such. So, uh, you know, I, I remember Dickinson when they used to have it like a, they had a night volleyball. Uh, uh, it was, you know, several times during the summer. Uh, very well attended and, you know, people enjoy it. I, you know, I, I, you know, hey, if we can carve out a section of it for it and use it off season that way, that, I think it's great. Any other comments? Mr. Tuszewski has his hand up. All right, Gary, I know you're not in full view, but I try yeah, not to. I... Interrupt. Um, so I, I think we can lump the volleyball uh, use for private, you know, the volleyball and use for private volleyball event with use of the gazebo for a private event with use of kind of weddings for private event and kind of basically say, kind of lump it together and say that the town 
will give per will you know can't may give permits for private events you know based on the on the on the town's kind of discretion of it and then specifically on the beach we need to kind of make a decision about how much of the beach can be um, closed off for a private event and where should that be but I, I think we can kind of lump them all together if someone wants to have a private event that's a beach volleyball competition okay fine a wedding fine um, you know maybe you know some kind of get together you know gazebo fine um, I don't think we need to kind of differentiate that much between whether it's volleyball or wedding or something else. Okay. Any other thoughts? Well, what about the specific suggestion of combining these into to, uh, the same provision so that we would have a single provision which would govern weddings, uh, volleyball, and any other special event? I think there would have to be some uh, specification for within each type of event, even though it would all be in the same provision. But we, uh, we can just lump it into, you know, the town rules apply for getting bonfires, uh, any permits, <laughs> you know, permitting, right? I mean, that's all part of it. <laughs> I, th I think I the only thing we really need to kind of really think about is when people want to have a private event, how much of the public beach should we allow to be reserved for the private event and how much time can those private events take? Um, I think it's important that we kind of think about that. All right. And th there is already a restriction proposed in, in these draft rules with respect to wedding events, uh, at least in terms of time, that wedding events are confined to one hour or less, including the time for setup and cleanup. Uh, I know there was some public comment about uh, the potential for wedding events or special events like that to take up too much time that, and I think um, Vince DeFonso uh, ref referred to uh, a few situations this past season where they had set up too early and therefore restricted too much of the normally public area uh, to be reserved for a private event. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure where to go with this. Um, you know, I can uh, certainly combine the volleyball into special events and have a more general provision uh, I'm not sure that it should be combined with bonfires. I think those are need to be have some separate regulations. Uh, but you know, any other final thoughts on this area? Okay. Not on volleyball, but other special events. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's go on to uh, to weddings, and that's the next. And um, yeah, this is specific just to weddings. That the Bay Beach and Gazebo can be rented for wedding ceremonies by securing a special use permit from the town of Dewey Beach. Rules and limitations regarding weddings must adhere to the same Oceanside rules. Such special use approvals shall be issued on a first come first serve basis. And uh, wedding events are confined to one hour or less, including time for setup and cleanup. Mayor, Mr. you had Person, a comment? Your comment? Go ahead. Uh, you skipped the one before that. Oh, I'm sorry. Because, yeah, no, no, it, it wasn't marked as to be discussed or okay. by you uh, right. for changing. It says consumption of alcohol on the public beach is prohibited at all times except via special use permits secured from the town of Dewey Beach for events exclusively managed by the Hyatt Hotel and or Lighthouse Cove Event Center. So first thing I thought of was why does the Hyatt get to exclusively manage events if it's a permit from the town, if, if it's allowed, the general public should be able to ask for a permit. And if they meet all the criteria that we want for the permit, they should be able to get it. And nobody should be able to have exclusive management of it other than the town in coordination with anybody that we decide we wanted to coordinate with. My, that's just my comment. Okay. Any other thoughts? Well, just a clarification, Gary, we did, we did say that we were going to make this consistent with the beach, right? We did say what? We did say that we were going to make the consumption of alcohol beverages consistent with the beach in terms of the time frame between September 15th and May 15th. Correct. This says at all times. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We do, we do need to fix that. That's, right. that's true. I, I just wanted to highlight that, but I believe that Mayor Cook is correct in that there should we should not be referencing any other entity in terms of rights and exclusiveness within this document. Yeah, I think I think to um, uh, 
Bill Stevens' point, um, the sign when you walk onto the beach, I think just says no alcohol May 15th to September 15th, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe, I, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I think there's a sign that says that. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. But we would have to make the provision here in these regulations right. consistent. Right. Mr. Persinger. Go ahead. So I, I think it should be up to the town with coordination, just like any of the other events that I'm looking at, like the Easter egg hunt and some of these other things. I think if, if you wanted to have something down there and have a wine tasting or something along those lines, I think as long as it's coordinated with the town ahead of time and it's approved, and as long as we're coordinating with the ABC and all the other folks that we need to do, I think it's something that the town should consider. Okay, Mr. Persinger. Go ahead, Mayor. Um, I, I want to emphasize what I think, and I may be wrong, but what I think a great job Dewey Beach Enterprises and the Hyatt Hotel have done mm -hmm. so far in quote unquote managing the beach. They have done an absolutely outstanding job. And I, I worry about, you know, I make my comments here about it sounds like I want to cut them out or have the town do everything. And I'm sure when this was suggested, they took into account that, that, that such a good job has been done on that beach and that the town is so limited with employees, especially during the summer and the number of people in town. So I, I just want to make that clear that uh, although I would not want it exclusively done by a private enterprise, I also want people to know what a great job it has been done over there. So. Thank you. Any other comments about this? I mean, yeah, I got a comment go on it. Go ahead, Commissioner Bauer. So, you know, as I, as I just reread this a few times here. So, I guess I believe what the high uh, TKO uh, enterprises do, I mean, they coordinate that wedding. You know, if, if you're booking a wedding there, they're coordinating everything. Here's the time. This is, you know, here's your flowers. Here's all that kind of stuff. So, here's where, you know, as a town, do we want to plug ourselves in as part of that process where, you know, the bride and groom come to us to get the permit? So they got the wedding plan, but they don't have the permit to walk onto the beach for pictures or, you know, whatever we want to do with that kind of stuff. So I think with the, you know, I like the idea of them coordinating it all and making, you know, making it subject to whatever permitting processes we have in place for all those events. Right. Okay. Any other so, reactions? You know, they're, they're coordinating it. They're not just doing it and cutting us out of it, but they're coordinating it with us. And I think we have a partnership versus, all right, well, we're done with you here now. Can you run over town hall and get your permit to go do this? <laughs> I'd rather the Hyatt just come directly to us and, you know, here's what they got planned. This is what's going on this month. Uh, you know, then we can plan for it uh, appropriately as well for staffing. I, uh, I, I don't disagree with that. I think the suggestion is should someone other than the Hyatt have, the, have an opportunity to come to the town and apply for a special use permit and put on a, a an event that is not managed by the Hyatt. That's right. that's the real issue here. Um, Mr. Kaczynski has his hand up. Uh, yes, I mean it, it, the, the the Hyatt does a lot for the for the beach, but it's not an exclusive concession. We've got to allow other people to have events there as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Persinger, I Go just ahead. I just worry about giving anybody exclusive rights and and allowing anybody, whether it be a, a volleyball tournament or, or that has happened on the ocean beach or, um, or any individual entity coming in and not only having exclusive rights, but being able to block off every, what would stop anybody from being able to block off every single weekend for a wedding party on that beach, you know, for, for the next uh, year. What, what would, there's nothing to stop that now. And somebody could come in in January and say, we have, uh, we have 20 weddings booked and we're going to do 20 weekends we want permit for 20 weekends on that beach, and then nobody else will be able to have any coordinated effort on that beach. I just okay. want to be careful, that's all. Okay. 
Any other comments? All right. Dale's um, point. Mr. Jaszewski has his hand up. Dale's point kind of goes back to what I was saying that we, I think we need to say there's a designated area of the, of the public beach that can be saved for events, whether it's a wedding or something else. And so there's an expectation that people aren't gonna block the whole beach. And then the town administratively can decide how far in advance it can be done and how many permits might be able to be done by a, by a specific entity. We, we can't have a situation where one entity basically blocks it off and it's their space permanently. And that, that space also needs to you know, run the concessions if people wanna uh, rent paddle boards and stuff like that. That should, it should be, it should basically be the event and commercialization section of the beach where all that type of stuff happens. That's my view. Okay. Any other thoughts? Um, so that brings us to the, um, back to the, the wedding provision. Uh, were there any other thoughts about that? I mean, I, th I think we're, we have, with these two provisions, we've been talking about opening things up a bit to um, different kinds of events uh, for which you might get a special use permit. Um, you know, again, there would be some special regulations with respect to weddings as opposed to some other type of event. But um, in general, just opening this up as long as the, uh, uh, the town is willing to issue a permit for that particular event. Any, uh, any thoughts or comments? Okay. Um, all right, moving down. Um, the next one that I have highlighted for, for, for discussion is uh, a prohibition on fishing from the, the Bay Walk or the beach uh, when bathers are within 100 feet from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. during the summer season. Any comments on that? Yes, Mr. Persinger. Go ahead. We have to remember uh, the a section of that was meant to be designated as a fishing pier or crabbing pier originally, and that was the whole, one of the one of the main ideas to get fathers and children and mothers and children down there and and do something together and, and crabbing. Now, I wouldn't recommend eating anything out of that bay right now. We we it, at certain times during the summer it gets very stagnant. But uh, but we want to be very careful how how much limitations we have here and and I, I I think this is the same rule they used on the ocean beach. I think it's logical because of the hooks and and line fishing line involved. But I, I just want us to remember that part of the idea of that bay walk and the pier was to to have some sort of uh, sport fishing or entertainment fishing for family. Okay, any other comments? Okay, hearing none. Uh, hey Dale, I, just one comment on it. I eat crabs out of that bay all the time. They're, they're excellent. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. That, that does, that gives me, that's the reason. Uh, that bay has never been cleaner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well that, that that was the last point that I had highlighted for discussion. Is there anything else that someone would like to bring up with respect to these rules and regulations? Um, I, I will turn it back over to the mayor with a suggestion. The suggestion being that we talk about some sort of a timeline for getting a new draft of these rules and regulations and thinking about what our process is going to be. I mean, we're, we're right now at the end of February. Uh, the season is gonna be on us before we know it. Um, and I think we wanna have this in place before the season really begins to crank up. Well, Mr. Persinger, what's your suggestion? My, I, I see Mr. Stephen has his hand up and I'll call on him as soon as I finish. Uh, what's your suggestion? I agree that our next meeting shouldn't be way down the road. And I don't know whether we need a separate meeting for this like we do now, or whether it should be part of a, an agenda. I'm afraid it will get lost in an agenda. And so we might need an, another meeting like this, uh, not necessarily a workshop, but an actual active voting meeting. So what's your yeah. thoughts, Mr. Persinger? 
I, I'm perfectly willing to take a shot at, uh, at the next draft. Um, and I certainly, I, I couldn't do it given other things going on. I couldn't do it before the next meeting on March 12th anyway. So oh, no. yeah. a special meeting um, might well make sense um, to, so that we can devote specific attention just to this issue and, and just make a commitment to get it done. Right, Mr. Stevens. I, I guess I was thinking that there seemed to be uh, some, a lot of common ground on, on these rules and, and where we're heading. And I didn't think this was gonna be similar to, I thought that we'd be able to get through this relatively quickly if it was added to the next meeting's agenda so that it could be completed in time. But, you know, Gary, if you, if you don't think that's possible, I understand, yeah. I, it's not possible for me at this point. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So uh, would, would you, would most of the commissioners like it to be a special meeting? I, I, I don't, don't hear, hear any, unless I hear negative question. comments. I'm okay, Go ahead, with Mr. It, I'm okay with it in April or a special meeting, either one's fine, but it needs to happen either the April meeting or a special meeting beforehand. Yeah, well, I think we have to make a move fairly quickly. I think we'll, how about, uh, uh, can we, is it possible to make it a special meeting towards the end of March? I I'm think- Hey. Okay, let's let's think about that and maybe have uh, Mr. Persinger and myself talk about it and and uh, and try to send something out to to the commissioners on a proposed agenda and meeting date, and then we get your comments on date and time and and move on with that. If I go ahead, sir. I, I think it's important that uh, we try to get the draft, a new draft done as, as soon as possible. Um, I mean, and I will certainly try to do that. I would like to have the public have an opportunity to, to see the draft. Um, and again, have their attention brought to the fact that we are intending to, uh, to vote on a set of rules and regulations for the Bayside Beach. I wanna make sure that people have an adequate opportunity to, to weigh in and provide their comments and uh, uh, give us some appropriate guidance. Yeah, I agree with you, Mr. Perkins. I would just warn us all to remember, it's easy to say we want people involved, but as, as many times as it was advertised by, by the town this time and the emails sent out, I still, be, right before the meeting, someone sent me an email saying, what the hell's going on? I haven't been told about anything. So I, I, it's, it's, we're not gonna please everybody. So. We just have to do what we think is right about this. We'll make the effort, Mr. Yeah, Persinger. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, of course not. But had we not made some effort to, to get out there and publicize it, you might have gotten 20 of those emails rather than just one. That's, that's correct. You're right. I, I didn't say anything different about that. But I'm saying we won't get everybody. We'll still have somebody complain about it. So we'll, Mr. Persinger and myself will get together on on a meeting date and time and, and ask for your suggestion. Is that all right? Works for me. Yes. All right, very good. Uh, town manager's comments. All good, sir. All right, commissioner's comments. Commissioner Bauer. No comment. I thought this was a great session. So I thank you, see. everyone. That's a comment, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Jasinski. The Great Beach. Appreciate the Hyatt and everything they've done in terms of building it out and maintaining it. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Persinger. Uh, I have no comments. Commissioner William Bill Stevens. No comment. No comment. And Mayor Dale H. Cook, no comment, except to thank Ashley for helping us get everything together. She's been a godsend to us with meetings. Thank you very much. With that, I'll accept a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. So moved. Is there a second? There's a second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Bye.